Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve the problem, that data analysis problem that you find, that you will find on page number 265. Problem number, problem number. It's a bar graph 4.1.2. 4.1.2 dealing with bar graph. So first the graph itself. First the graph itself, we're going to put it right here, as best as we can. We have colleges here, and we have apparently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 colleges, A through E, A, B, C, D, E. And then we have enrollment here, this is going to be the enrollment. Enrollment is spelled with a, there is no L, E after the L, I knew it. Here's the enrollment, and we're going to express that in thousands. So here's our 8. Let's cut it out in half, that's your 4. Let's cut it in half again, so that's your 2. This is your 6. And that's close enough for us, to, it's good enough for us to start. College A, I'm just copying the data uh, from the graph as it's shown. College A, we are told, has 4,000 students. So here's our 4,000. And here's our College A. Simple enough, that's your College A. College B, as you can, as you read the graph carefully, is between four and five. Actually, it's four and a half. Four and a half is going to be a tough one for us. So this is five. Four and a half is going to be around here somewhere, and that's going to be a college B. Let's make a note. A was four. B was four and a half. How much is C? Again, you should have the book in front of you. C is little under 5, just a little under 5. So there's your 5, there's your 5, and it's just a little under it. Just a little under 5, that's your C. You can make a note here. The C is just a little under 5, and this is how we write it. 5 with a minus sign on top of it. What about college D? College D, if you look carefully, it looks to me like 6 and a half. It looks to me like 6 and a half. Here's your 6, there is your 7. Six and a half is going to be here. As you can see, it's not that complicated to reproduce it. And you should reproduce it because even though you may think that you understand and, and, and so forth, but reproducing it manually with uh, yourself by hand, you begin to understand it intimately, you begin to understand the nitty gritty of it. So, we agreed that it was six and a half, we said. D was six and a half, and finally E. If you look closely, it looks to me like seven and a half. So there is your, there is your eight, there is your seven, seven and a half somewhere here. There is your E, and E we agreed was seven and a half. Simple enough. Let's do a couple of problems. Let's do a couple of problems and see what you can do. We'll do two or three problems. So here's the first question. And if we run our room, I may have to erase the graph. I don't want to erase the graph. Uh, perhaps we can put down the data here. Instead of occupying all this room, why don't we put the data here? Four, A was four, B was four and a half, C was five, little under five, D was six and a half, and seven and a half. Eventually, down the road, we're going to have to figure out as we do the problems. I'm going to give you three problems to solve three problems based on these charts and during the course of those problems we're going, to, we're going to have to know the total number of students in these five colleges. So before I actually erase this thing, this, this setup is more conducive to adding up the figures instead of doing it like this. So let's add them up first for I find out what the total enrollment was in all five colleges. So let's get going shall we? Half plus half plus half is one and a half. Carry one. I need my pens here and I want to make sure that I don't muck it up. Muck it up with an M, not an F. Okay, one plus 
4 is 5, 5 plus 5 is 10, 4 plus 6 is 10, 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 7 is 27. So I, I get 27 and a half. I don't know what you get, but that's what I'm getting, 27 and a half. One more time, I'm going to go through it very quickly to show you how we did it. Half and half and half is three halves, so that's half and carry one. Okay, stay with me in the story. 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 5 is 10, 4 plus 6 is 10, 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 7 is 27. There we go. Let's do the problem. The first question is, enrollment B, enrollment, enrollment in college B was approximately what percent, what percent of A? So these three problems that we are about to do, the very first one that you see already on the blackboard, don't try to find them in the book, they are not in the book, this is something that I'm giving you. Three problems we are going to do based on this chart, based on this bar graph. If you like, you can pause the video, do the thing yourself and then see, compare your work against the work we are going to do together. So I'm going to give you two seconds to do just that for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. It's a simple question. Enrollment in College B was approximately, and the key here is to understand they're looking for approximate, they're not looking for the exact value. Approximately what percentage of A? Oh, let's see what we have. So we're looking for B as opposed to A. At this ratio we're looking for in terms of percentage. What is the enrollment B? Right there, four and a half. Four and a half over Four. Oh, this is too simple. Four and a half over four. And since they are looking for percentages, we don't have to give them approximate answer. We can give them the exact answer, assuming that this figure is exact, which is very difficult to see from the graph. Which is why probably we would they would use the word approximate. That's it. Four and a half over four. And we wanted a percentage. Percentage means percent means out of hundred. So we need to make the bottom into a hundred. We have a four. How can I convert my four into a hundred? It's very simple. Multiply top and bottom by twenty-five. As long as you multiply both top and bottom by the same number, we haven't changed the quantity. There you go. Now we have now we have 100 at the bottom. All we have to do now is to multiply 4 times 25. 4 times 100, 4 times 100 we know is 100, and 25 halves is going to be 12 and a half over 100. There we go, we are done. The answer is 112 and a half percent. The enrollment in college B. Enrollment in college B is approximately 112.5% of college A. Now, did you understand how I did it here? It's 25 times 4.5, and, and if you like, I can show you here on the top how we do it. And it'll be better if we put 25 first. 25 times 4.5 is what we're looking for. It's very simple. 25 times 4 is 100, and 25 halves is going to give you 12 and a half. Because 24 times half would have been 12. Answer is 12 and a half. Let's do problem number two. Let's do problem number two. Let's see what they're asking. Or to be more precise, let's see what they're asking because they're not asking anything. Question number B. Approximately, again, they're looking for approximate. Approximately what percent? Approximately what percent of all students are enrolled in C. Approximately what percentage of the students are enrolled in C? Well, let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's see what we can do. Again, the idea is to understand that they're looking for approximate value, which is very important to pay attention to, because if you do not pay attention to it, and if you sit there and insist on doing the exact calculation, it will take an inordinate amount of time. It will take unreasonable amount of time. It will save excessive amount of time. The idea is to learn to approximate. So. As you can see, approximately what percentage of students in, are enrolled in C? C we have four and a half. So it's four and a half over 27 and a half. Is that right? No, C, sorry, C is little under five. C is little under five. Little under five over 27 and a half. So here's, and of course, to find the percentage, we have to do by 100. Now here's what the approximation part comes in. Okay, here we go. Why don't you try it yourself again? Try it yourself, pause the video, do it yourself, see what you can do. It's very simple, very straightforward. Take your 5, even though it's little under 5, it's okay. Take your 5, divided by 27, 
forget the half, forget the half right now, times, as you can see, 100 is not going to divide by 27. 100 and 27, there is nothing in common. It's not going to work out because the prime factors, prime factors of 100s are 2s and 5s. Prime factors of 27 is 3. It's not going to work. So let's convert this 100 into 99. Just to keep our math simple. Okay, watch what happens. Convert it into 99 and see what happens. And if we do that, 27, how many 9's does 27 have? 27 has 3 9's and 99 has 11 9's. And what do we end up with? We end up with 55. 5 times 11 is 55 over 3. And let's just divide it. Let's just divide 55 by 3. 5 has 1 3. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 5 becomes 25 and 25 has 8 3's. 8 3's are 24 with the remainder of 1 third. So it looks like it's approximately 18%. A little over 18 percent. The answer is going to be approximately 18 percent. As you can see, it's going to be a little over 18 percent. But of course, then we can't really go by that because we're doing a lot of approximation. We converted this 199 and we dropped the half from here. So around 18 percent is the answer. So if you find one answer twice that is close to 18 percent, or perhaps they round it to the nearest 10 and they're giving you as 20 percent, pick that. If they're giving you 20, 25, 15, pick the 20 percent because you're looking for 18, 18 percent. Let's do the very last one, shall we? Let's do the very last one. The last question is asking us, what is the ratio of students, what is the ratio of the students in E to C? E to C, what's the ratio? Let's find out. That cannot be that bad. E is seven and a half. And E to C. C is 5. Oh, this is too simple. It is too simple. Again, you should be doing it yourself. Now pay attention here that they're looking for E to C and not C to E. So E is going to go first, which is 7.5 over 5. Even though it's a little under 5, that's okay. That's fine, but you can approximate. What can we do next year? Do you like this business of half? I don't like the business of half. How do we get rid of this half? Well, it's very simple. If you have half, if you multiply it by 2, that half is going to become 1. But we can't simply multiply top by 2, because we must multiply bottom by 2 as well. So this quantity is same as the quantity that was given to us. 7.5 times 2 is 15, and 5 times 2 is 10. So it looks like the ratio is 3 to 2. Of course it's 3 to 2. Of course it's 3 to 2, because we could have seen it from here. 7.5 is made up of... Three two and a half. Three two and a halves make seven and a half. And five is made up of two two and a half. Of course, the ratio is three to two. That's all we have for today. In the next video, we'll do the next topic, which has to do with which has to do with segmented bar graph. Which has to do with segmented bar graph, which is the problem that you see on the bottom of the page, four point one point three, on the same page, page two sixty five. Okay, bye now.